30% of patients who receive treatment for major depressive disorder will not respond to that treatment and will be considered treatment resistant. However, one single infusion of ketamine can have rapid and robust effects seen in at least 50% of people as they will respond positively within two hours of receiving this treatment. So is ketamine a miracle drug? Is it hype or is there hope? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk all about ketamine and S-ketamine or the brand name Spravato and how it's used in treatment-resistant depression. So stay tuned. So number one, what is ketamine? Well, ketamine was an anesthetic used in the 70s and it was primarily used for anesthesia, for surgeries, and for pain control in the emergency room. However, it showed very robust antidepressant effects. And so ketamine is a racemic mixture where it has the R and S antiomers, and S-ketamine is where they take the S form of that ketamine and use it singularly as a new product. And a lot of drug companies do this when they want to brand uh, an old medication and get a new patent for it. So that's how S-ketamine came about. Now this S form of ketamine has been shown to have the same robust antidepressant effects as the original ketamine. However, it's said to be a little more potent. And compared with the regular ketamine, S-ketamine is said to have a less psychomimetic effect, but a more anesthetic and analgesic effect, and also has three to four times more affinity for the NMDA receptor sites and that's how it targets depression. You see, antagonizing the NMDA receptor sites actually increases glutamate, and glutamate is our excitatory neuronal activity, our excitatory centers. And in depression, a lot of people are down, especially treatment-resistant depression. It's that lack of motivation, that lack of interest, the low energy that really gets people, and those tend to be the hardest symptoms to treat. Well, when you give ketamine, it tends to produce this rapid effect by increasing glutamate and also having some downstream effects on increasing neuroplasticity and the way that we view the world. Also, because of its psychoactive properties, even though it's minimized with S-ketamine, when it's used to its advantage, a lot of times therapy is also included in the treatment plan. And so those therapists who are trained in guiding patients in the psychoactive phase of the ketamine induction to help with therapy to kind of get over traumas and underlying issues and roots of their depression actually have the most positive effects when it comes to ketamine treatment and ketamine outcomes. And so that leads us to what ketamine is used for. Well, the S-ketamine or Spravato was FDA approved in 2019, and it got its approval for treatment-resistant depression when used adjunctively with antidepressants and for major depressive disorder in patients who are acutely suicidal or have acute symptoms of suicidal ideation. So the original ketamine was approved in 1970. However, it's used off label to treat major depressive disorder, the treatment resistant depression, and even other mental illnesses such as anxiety and PTSD. It's used off label for those disorders. And so how long does ketamine take to work? As we mentioned in the beginning, it has robust effects seen within the first couple of hours, and this effect can last for up to two weeks. However, after that two weeks, it seems as though that antidepressant effects wears off and the patient has to come back and get another dose of the ketamine or S-ketamine. And this is typically seen with the S-ketamine in therapeutic dosages of 58 to 84 milligrams. And this is using a nasal spray where each spray is a 12 milligram dose. Now the induction phase, which is used in weeks one through four of the spray is used twice a week. Then in the maintenance phases, phase one, which is weeks five through eight, it's used one time a week. Then in the phase two of the maintenance phase, 
which is weeks nine and after, it's used every other week. However, it can be used weekly if patients don't respond to the every other week dosing. Now with the IV infusion of ketamine, those dosages are variable because again, it's off label and there aren't many clinical guidelines to guide that type of treatment. However, if you look at the research, what's out there, it's typically anywhere from 0.2 milligrams per kilogram all the way up to one milligram per kilogram. And most people are using now 0.5 milligrams per kilogram as a dose. And usually this is given via intravenous infusion over 40 minutes to one hour. And it's given weekly or bi-weekly depending on the patient's response. And as I mentioned, these positive effects are seen within a couple of hours and last about two weeks. And to use the Spravato, it has to be used with an antidepressant. So a lot of times it's used as a booster to help boost the antidepressant's effects. And then it's weaned off where just the antidepressant is left alone for treating that condition. So is ketamine addicting? Well, yes, it actually is. It's considered a controlled three substance and has a lot of abuse potential. It actually has a lot of street names and is currently being abused out on the streets. Also, tolerance can develop to this medication and so that is also a concern. However, when you're taking it in these lower dosages as it's prescribed by your provider, the likelihood of addiction and tolerance does decrease. However, withdrawal effects can occur and so this has to be something that you need to be aware of. And these withdrawal effects include things like cravings for ketamine, a lot of fatigue, poor appetite, anxiety, insomnia, mood swings, shaking, depression, sweating, and even heart palpitations can occur. So if that's happening with you and you're on ketamine, talk to your doctor about it because you may be experiencing some withdrawal effects which leads us to the side effects. So what are the side effects of ketamine? So the common side effects, which were seen in greater than 5% of those in the FDA trials and seen at least twice as much as that of placebo were the following side effects. Disassociation, dizziness, nausea, sedation, vertigo, anxiety, lethargy or weakness, blood pressure increases, vomiting and feeling drunk or feeling very sedated. So therefore when you take ketamine, whether it be the S-ketamine nasal spray or the infusion, you can't drive within 24 hours after taking that. You need to make sure that you get good rest that day and then the next day you can drive and operate machinery. Also, during that disassociation period, like I mentioned earlier, that could actually be used to the advantage of a therapist who's trained to guide someone through uh, that type of experience to help them with any underlying issues such as trauma. Then patients are also supposed to be monitored for at least two hours after receiving either the infusion or the nasal spray. And so some rare but dangerous uh, side effects that you need to be aware of with esketamine is that increased blood pressure. Because esketamine increases blood pressure, patients with cardiovascular or cerebral vascular conditions uh, have to be monitored more carefully and in fact, there's some contraindications such as patients with aneurysmal vascular disease, arterial venous malformations, or history with intracranial hemorrhaging. Now, respiratory depression can also occur, and this is more common with intravenous ketamine, so the infusion rate and dosing will have a big factor in this. That is something to be cautious of with the intravenous ketamine. Embryo fetal toxicity can occur, so this is not something that a pregnant woman would want to take and also cognitive impairment. And cognitive impairment is actually seen a little commonly with short-term use, but it usually goes away after about two hours or 24 hours. However, um, long-term cognitive impairment can be a factor. The problem is, is that there aren't a lot of long-term studies with using ketamine for long periods of time. And so this long-term cognitive impairment um, could be more of a problem than what we know right now. And another factor is that emerging suicidal ideation can occur, though this is not a black box warning with esketamine, like the antidepressants, it is something that should be considered. And some research suggests that the emerging suicidal ideation is actually the conjunction of the antidepressant 
and boosting that effect. And that could be the problem or why these patients had emerging suicidal ideation. But either way, if you're experiencing emerging suicidal ideation or new suicidal thoughts, please make sure to share that with your provider and also uh, go to the emergency room for treatment right away. So now let's talk about drug interactions with ketamine or S-ketamine. Well, ketamine is primarily metabolized by the CYP452B6 and 3A4. It's secondarily metabolized by the 2C9 and 2C19, but it does not inhibit or induce any of the metabolic pathways or enzymes. And so because it's metabolized by these different pathways, the drug interactions of ketamine are very minimal, but it's always safest practice to make sure you do your drug interaction checks and make sure that this will not interfere with any of your medications. Now, some medications that you do want to avoid are going to be other NMDA antagonists, which can cause increase in side effects of ketamine or esketamine. And these would be things like amantadine, memantine, and dextromethorphan. Other sedatives could have potentiating effects, making the sedation aspect of ketamine worse. So stay away from combining it with benzos, barbiturates, opiates, pain medications, and other anesthetics, and of course, alcohol. And also consider that stimulants and the MAOI inhibitors can actually increase the blood pressure and can be a factor with that side effect with S-ketamine. So that's something to avoid when you're taking S-ketamine. Now, when you're taking IV ketamine, theophylline or aminoophylline can actually decrease seizure threshold significantly, making you more prone to seizures. So those are typically avoided with IV use of ketamine. And so my final thoughts on ketamine, is it hype or is there hope? Well, it seems like ketamine has robust effects and in all the research that I've looked at with ketamine and all of the things that I've seen, it seems to have this positive effect for treating treatment resistant depression. And there aren't many options out there for treatment resistant depression. I mean, there are some new drugs coming out for it, but none that are as promising as ketamine or some of the psychedelics that are in the works. Now, because I don't use ketamine in my practice, I can't really say whether or not I'm seeing the same effects that these studies show. However, if it's able to provide some benefit for someone with treatment resistant depression, it should be something to be considered. But there are some limitations. And of course, one of them is cost. So Spravato, because it is FDA approved, some insurances will cover it. But remember that you'll have to fail at least two antidepressants before being considered treatment resistant. And so that would have to be factored in. And not all insurance companies will follow that model in order to have Spravato covered. So there may be some more hoops that you have to go through to get it covered. Now, if you're paying out of pocket, that could be expensive as one single dose or spray is anywhere between 120 to 240 dollars and so if you're at the 56 milligram dose that could be 960 dollars just for one treatment and then when you're looking at the iv infusions of ketamine infusions can run anywhere from 400 to 2000 dollars per infusion or per treatment so that in of itself can be expensive and the iv treatment um, or those iv infusion clinics are not covered under insurance because there's no fda approval for the regular form of ketamine to be given uh, intravenously or to be given in other routes. Now there are also some online options that do microdosing and sublingual tablets of ketamine that can be a little more affordable like Mind Bloom and Joyous. With Mind Bloom, it's about 195 a month for your first few sessions and then there's a membership after that. And then with Joyous, it's $129 a month. So those could be affordable options if you're looking for smaller doses of ketamine and using it sublingually in different ways. And though there is this robust evidence that it works, like I mentioned when I talked about the side effects and those long-term cognitive effects that could be a factor, we don't have a lot of long-term studies to show that you know there could be some long-term effects. 
And so this is where maybe some hype comes in and we have to pause and be careful and weigh out the risks versus benefits quite heavily because this reminds me a lot of the benzodiazepines when they first came out, they had robust effects, treatment right away was seen and effectiveness was seen within minutes of taking the medications. However, we find out many years later that there are neurological injuries uh, with patients that are stuck on the benzodiazepines because we found out that really it should only be used short term and not long term. And those patients who were using it long term and then try to come off, most of them end up with a lot of side effects, withdrawal effects, and some permanent neurological injury. So that's something to consider if you're going to use ketamine. Yes, it's something that shows effectiveness, but there's still a lot of question marks with its long-term use that still have to be studied and we still don't know what those long-term consequences will be. And some of those consequences can even be substance abuse risk. So keep that in mind. So that wraps up my review on ketamine or esketamine for the treatment of depression. So what do you think about using ketamine? Is it hype or do you feel there's hope? Let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are, or if you've experienced taking ketamine for treatment resistant depression, I'd love to hear about it because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.